I'm just on my way. It is a Saturday. I'm on my way to uh, drop off a camera for someone and just have a quick little meeting talk. Uh, as I mentioned before, as a kind of a freelance worker, you you kind of work every day, but you kind of like you know today work is about an hour, right? That's all I work on a Saturday, and then Sunday night often I'll work for about two, three hours doing some video editing at night, and that's kind of the life of a YouTuber slash camera reviewer slash whatever I want to call myself. All right. Oh, there's no... Do it like this. Click. Click. Hello everyone, this is Taki from BigHeadTalker.com and I'm coming to you here from my home studio to do my quick review of the Canon EOS M6. Now this is the latest M mirrorless body from Canon. Uh, I did previously test the EOS M5 which I thought was a fantastic camera. Uh, great for everything from stills to video. Um, I had the adapter previously and so I was able to put on the regular EF lenses. Did not see any uh, in terms of image quality or, or AF speed or tracking ability when I went to an EF lens it was pretty much one to one as if I was using native lenses so uh, it's a great incentive for those that have existing EF lenses but of course the advantage of going mirrorless is to be able to go smaller and so I think long term if you want to invest in the EOS M system it'd be great to have native lenses and so uh, this is my review of the Canon EOS M6 let's get started so the biggest difference I've noticed between the M5 and the M6, I think really is, it comes down to the articulating, the way that you see when you take pictures. So the M5 has a built-in EVF, but because of it, the articulating screen swings downwards. And I think that was the, probably the biggest complaint for those that uh, wanted to shoot selfies or are vloggers because of, a, a, because of it swinging down. is a little bit of an awkward uh, position for it to be. Most vloggers are used to having the screen face coming up this way so that they can sort of vlog looking like this. And But however, because it does go upwards, there is no uh, built-in EVF. Now you can buy the accessory EVF if you really wanted to, but the M5 comes with it already. And so in terms of pricing, uh, the EOS M6 uh, with the kit lens, which is the 15 to 45 that I have on here, is 899 US at this time. And I'm using B&H as sort of like the benchmark pricing uh, for uh, US pricing. And um, uh, if you want it without the lens, you just, let's say you already have an M5 or you've bought an M3 or the M1 or any of the other M's, or you have EF lenses and you buy the adapter, uh, body only 779, 899 with the kit lens. Now compared to the M5, the current price of the M5 body only is $929. So that's about $160 more expensive, $150 more expensive. But if you buy the accessory EVF, the EVF DC2, then the price because that the EVF price is $209.95. So $210. You add that price on top of the M6, and now this is more expensive than the M5. So it really comes down to this. Uh, both cameras pretty much use the same sensor, same processor. It seems like it's the same body just modified because everything seems to line up where the battery compartments are, the grip, the buttons, everything. There are, there are some differences and I'll go over them in a second but uh, if it really comes down to if you want to built in EVF or not and which way the screen articulates. If you never want to use selfie mode I would say get the M5 because the EVF is very handy, especially for those that are coming from Canon uh, DSLR to mirrorless. You guys are used to looking through something, right? Not composing, just using a back screen. So because of that, I say go M5. But if you are a vlogger and you want to vlog um, or do selfies, you could do selfies with the M5, but because it swings downwards, you won't be able to get it onto a tripod. If you're using some kind of a selfie stick, uh, the screen gets in the way. So that's kind of like the only big reason why you go one or the other. In terms of specs, it's the same as the M5, it's a 24.2 megapixel CMOS C sensor with the uh, Digic 7 image processor, which is the most current Canon uh, crop sensor and processor combo that they have right now in their lineup. Uh, ISO sensitivity of 100 to 25,600, although it would never go that high. 
uh, video. This is kind of a contention with some vloggers. It is not a contention with me at this time, but the maximum output video on these uh, using that sensor and uh, processor combo is it's high, uh, HD 1080p 60 frames per second. That's it. There is no 4K, there is no 120 frames per second option. And so uh, Canon's video is very good, it's very stable. Uh, the AF is good, the image stabilization is really good, but in terms of the resolution, uh, that for some, that's just not an option. They want to go 4K, and so because of that, these, uh, this combination at this time, 4K is not offered. Uh, this dual pixel CMOS AF, it actually uses uh, two separate photodiodes uh, within each phase detect, uh, which, within each pixel. It's a phase detect across almost the entire uh, uh, sensor. And because of that, you get a really nice AF both in stills or in video. But if you use video, um, if you use video AF, it actually changes to a movie servo AF and it gives really smooth natural focus and that's something I noticed with the Canon video and that's something that probably other brands should really work on is that when the camera is in video mode, you know, most brands will give you manual, continuous or, or single speed and within single or, or, or continuous there's certain types of AF tracking they give. Well the Canon has a, uh, the movie servo AF is very specifically to video so you get nice transitions, nice pull focus as the camera is uh, going in and out of focus and if you are uh, either shooting a video or you are doing selfie video and you are you know picking you know focusing on yourself and then to say there's someone behind you or beside you that's a bit further away you touch it gives a real nice natural transition transition focus between uh, the two different focus points so that's what I really appreciate about these Canon uh, the Canons in terms of the uh, AF ability the uh, touch AF uh, the subject tracking, face detect is very solid as you'll see. I'll insert some um, some vlogging videos. Uh, right now I can touch focus and pull focus. So if I just touch the screen, bang, it'll stay focused on me. If I wanted to change focus on something behind me, so let's just say I touch the screen now like that to focus in behind me. It should be trying to focus behind me there. Should be. And then back on my face again. Uh, great optical it's optical as well as electronic uh, image stabilization. They say it's sensor based, but it's electronic sensor based. The sensor itself isn't shifting, but also it works in collaboration with the optical image stabilization. The uh, focus tracking is fantastic. It focus tracks well. Um, great for vloggers. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And as well, um, another advantage is, um, yeah, so the, the touch screen actually is, is a huge, huge deal. Um, and the fact that it's touch screen and it's front facing. So you can, um, right now, you know, I'm wearing my glasses here, looking at the screen, uh, at the lens, but now I'm looking up, right? So sometimes it's good to do that Casey Neistat thing where you're looking up and even though it looks like I'm looking at you, I'm actually looking up on the screen, make sure everything's in focus and I can frame well. Um, it's great to learn to not always look though. So right now I'm just looking at the lens, but it is also great to be able to look especially if you have other people and you want different elements in the background. So if you are always thinking about your shot, this is a great camera to use it for. Um, it is great for vlogging and the combination uh, image stabilization, the built-in body five axis digital uh, image stabilization, so it doesn't mean that the physical sensor is moving, but it's the digital five axis in combination with the optical image stabilization creates, again, I'll, I'll put inserts in, but it creates a really, really stable uh, stabilization, which which I really, um, uh, I really appreciate. So you have great optical, uh, great stabilization, great AF, not only uh, tracking, face tracking, uh, but also being able to touch and pull focus. So those are all, all the things that I, I raved about. The M5 is also available here in the M6. And so I'll show you right now my my vlogging setup for those of you that are interested uh, because I think a lot of people are going to be using this for vlogs. So let, let me just switch over now to my vlogging rig. Uh, should I kind of do something? Maybe I'll do it right now. Did I do that good? So uh, this is it here. Uh, I have a really cheap Optex flash bracket, but instead of putting a flash on here, I'm putting the shotgun microphone, which is really important for vlogging. The built-in microphones are not bad, but when you're outdoors and there's wind or a lot of traffic noise, you do want the microphone to just pick up what you're saying in front of you. And so if you are vlogging, 
Just keep in mind that if you're behind the microphone, especially with this Rode Video Micro, it's picking up mostly from the front. Um, I keep a strap on because, uh, I, you know, I want my hands free, but that's kind of a personal choice. If you are only a vlogger and not a photographer, or you're not doing, like say you're a vlogger, but you're a bike riding vlogger. Well, it's nice to be able to not have to always hold it in one hand. Uh, or for me, I'm a camera reviewer. Uh, and photographer slash vlogger, but I'm not using this as my primary camera. You can if you want, which is great if you can vlog and take images out of the same camera, but often I have a review camera, so I'll hold this around here, and then I'll have another camera, and put this down, pull this off, and then I would vlog like this, like that, right? So this is kind of how I would vlog with this camera, if that makes sense. And the strap, you know, it's kind of in the way but it's fine and so this is where you make sure you have the right lens this is the 50 and 45 it's decent as you'll see in my inserts but I would like the wider I think it's the 11 to 22 lens I think that's probably more of a vlogging style because with the Fujifilm I was using the 10 to 24 I find that being between 12 and 14 was about the ideal uh, focal range to be in uh, and this one here, it only goes as wide as 15, so you know, it's pretty close, but um, and at times, sometimes I wanted to go 10 so I can get really close and you know, if it's really noisy and I wanted to get a really wide look behind me and I'm in a narrow, tight spot, it is great to have that option to go 11, right, which is about a, um, about 16 millimeter wide on the Canon. The Canon crop factor is different than the other APS-C, so it's not 1.5, it is 1.6, I think, right? So getting about a 60 millimeter equivalent wide angle. So that's, I think, perfect for vlogging. So this is my setup, something that I cannot have done with the M5 because, again, as, as the screen tries to swing downwards, even this knob gets in the way. You can rig up something where um, you're using more of a flat screw and this isn't in the way. It will swing down and you could still hold it like this. So it's not that the M5 will on and off switch right there. That is on and off right there which to me is in a very odd spot. And then there Not that it's impossible to use the M5 for vlogging or even on a tripod, right? So if you have a screw here to screw into the tripod socket and you can have another screw here, right? So then you can actually mount the tripod this way and then still have the screen swing down. It's possible. And then you have the basically a built-in EVF. Uh, so you can make it work. And for some people, they even said that uh, having, and you gotta hold it like this, so having the screen face down, it actually does help you to hold the camera up higher. We're tend, vloggers tend to sometimes, we're, we're looking into the screen, and because it's up top, we tend to hold the camera too low. It is better to have it up high like that, and having the screen swing down does kind of force you to go up higher, and you actually get a, a, a much more pleasing a vlogging experience, if you can say that. And so, uh, really comparing the two, uh, you you lose uh, between the M5 and the M6. The M5, you get an extra custom function button on the top, which is on the mode dial. You get an extra button on the front here. Uh, this lacks those two buttons. Um, but I do like how the mode dial on the M5 is on, on the far left side, as well as the on and off switch is on the far left side. And I always thought that was in a weird spot. Now the M6 is on the right side and it doubles up the, the uh, exposure compensation button with the rear dial button together. So that's, that's actually really good. It's even better than the M5. And so you have all three, all four dials. You have the back dial, the compensation dial, the mold dial, and the front dial with the built-in shutter release in the middle. So you got one, two, three, four, all in this corner. And it feels really comfortable. It's small here, nice and small as a mirrorless camera, but uh, everything's spaced out wide enough so that it's comfortable to shoot with. And so in terms of ergonomics, I actually like the M6 over the M5. M5 again, on and off on the left side. It just seemed like it was in an off, a uh, very awkward spot. In terms of uh, the menu system, as I mentioned before, this is a full touch implementation uh, UI, the, the uh, user input experience. And so because of that, uh, you can uh, scroll through all your menus. You can you know, go into, so you're in shooting mode, there's eight menus, and you can just scroll through all the menus. You know, it's all touch. And if you don't want to use touch, you can still use this four-way controller and it still feels very natural. So either you use a screen, so you know I can use this to go through or I can swipe 
or it can press the folders up top. You can scroll up and down using the four-way controller or you could just use your fingers. So it's very intuitive. You can go either way uh, in terms of how you want to scroll through this if you'd rather just not touch the screen. But having the touch screen while you're shooting for uh, for choosing your focus points and in video using it for pull focus and making sure that it's focusing on the right thing especially when it's facing forward so you can actually see what's happening or if you're the videographer behind the camera and you want to make sure it's focusing on the right person or the right, right subject uh, it's great to be able to use that touch and I think a lot of brands uh, Fuji a lot of brands need to work on that pull focus live in focus while you're focusing and so uh, for me, between the two, the M5 and the M6, for me, because I do vlogging and I really want, um, even right now as I'm recording this video, I'm actually using the M5 to shoot this video. I uh, can't see what's happening because I don't have a special bracket on the M5 and so I can't see the screen. Um, if you're really serious about the video, you would output HDMI to an external monitor, but I guess I'm serious, but I'm just maybe too cheap to do that. Uh, but I can't see what's happening. With the M5, if I, uh, M6, if I was shooting the same video, I would basically have it on tripod just like this, right? So I'd still get the shotgun microphone, and at least I get a basic idea of framing and making sure everything is working. Uh, the M5 isn't doing that. So what I would do is I would personally get the M6. And in fact, to be honest, full disclosure, although this is a review camera right now, I'm actually really considering buying this to vlog with and to shoot my videos. Um, I do like the color science, the color profiles on the Fujifilm, I really like it. But the Canon is also very, very good as you can see in this video and with my inserts. Uh, but uh, in terms of vlogging, it's just not the, the, the Fuji, uh, even the Sony, it's just really not up to snuff yet. You see Casey Neistat shooting the Sony's, none of the screens articulate forwards for what he's using. I think the RX100 series, yes, uh, it flips forward, but the A6500, the A7 series does not yet. And because of that, APS-C size sensor, so it competes with the A6500, competes with the Fujifilm X-T20. Um, being able to uh, see forward like this, getting the larger APS-C sensor, a touch screen, great focus, great optical image stabilization, being able to use the legacy EF lenses, the biggest weakness with the Canon system is definitely uh, the lack of lenses. For me, I would get the 11 to, I think it's 11 to 22. I'd get the 22 fixed F2. Maybe the macro, I think it's a 28 mil macro. And that's, I think, pretty much it. Canon's going to have to start adding some more pro. Right now, it's not a pro series, but as I mentioned in my M5 review, I can really see Canon moving towards a pro camera. Uh, their, Canon seems very serious now about this M uh, series, and so as I mentioned before, the M6 is a lower model than the M5, so it seems like they're doing the reverse of what they initially started off, where as it was a newer model, the numbers are going up, and now it seems like they're going to go backwards. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a future M1, which will be full frame, uh, full frame, mirrorless, weather sealed, uh, M body, and maybe that's kind of why these lenses are not yet pro yet, because they are working on more pro primes and pro centric uh, zoom lenses like constant aperture f2, f2.8. And, and one of the reasons why I think that is, I'm going to get close here, let's hope that the AF will catch this, but as you can see, there is a lot of space. Is it picking up there? There you go. There is a lot of space in there, guys. That's an APS-C sensor. Look at the size of the mount. That is a full frame mount. And I said the same for the, um, I said the exact same thing. I said the exact same thing uh, when the Leica T came out. I'm like, man, that mount is pretty big for APS-C. I think Leica is gonna come out with a full frame version using that same mount. And the same thing with the, uh, the Sony uh, mirrorless, the E-mount. I looked at it, I'm like, I think they're gonna get some full frame, they're gonna get full frame lenses and a full frame sensor in here. And so, likewise, I predict that this is gonna be their full frame mirrorless mount. Currently, they have APS-C, they're gonna get a full frame, and that is very smart on Canon. And so, um, final thoughts, fantastic. I, like I said, I'm gonna get this uh, for, for vlogging. For stills, it's probably an underappreciated camera for stills because of the current lenses. The ADD is a great APS-C camera, and it's basically the same sensor and processor. I think it is a Digic 7 processor, but the sensor itself 
might be a little bit different, but it is dual pixel technology. So you're gonna get the same AF speed, the same sort of stabilization. It's pretty much the same camera. And so you can expect the same image quality. Uh, I will maybe post some pictures that I took with the M6 or just insert some pictures I took with the M5 because it's I was using the same lens and the same sensor. Now on the camera right now, I have the 18 to 18 to 150, I think it is. 18 to 150, so it's like a 28 to 200, which is a very common all-in-one zoom back even in the late 80s, early 90s that a lot of people would take on cruises. It's not a big lens, it's not a heavy lens, so if you want one camera and you like interchangeable lens and you want, you're going on a cruise or a vacation, you just want to bring one lens, 18 to 150 is a, is a fantastic range. Although remember, in terms of apertures, f3.5 to 6. Point three, so it's a little bit slow. Maybe get the 18 to 150, and then get the one prime, right? Get the get the 22 f2, and, and I think you're set. But the one thing that's missing right now, I think, is the WR. But I do think the WR is coming, maybe on an upcoming M4 or an M3 or maybe an M2 model, kind of more of a pro series, perhaps with an optional um, vertical control grip, not just for the grip or the vertical shooting feature, but as well as be able to pop in an extra battery or two, I think that would be really helpful. But WR, I think, is really important. And instead of using uh, electronic image stabilization, actually having a sensor base, so the sensor the sensor is actually shifting, and that you'll probably produce better image stabilization when you do so. So that's my review, guys. I think this is a fantastic camera. I'll have inserts throughout comparing the M5 with the M6. Uh, for me, as I mentioned, if I wasn't a video guy, if I wasn't a vlogger, if I didn't, I don't really shoot uh, still selfies for myself, but I know that if you're doing group shots, family shots, it's great to be able to see what you're framing instead of handing your camera off to, to someone else to take the picture. So that's it, guys. That's my review on the Canon EOS M6. I think it's a fantastic camera. The M5 is also a fantastic camera. The 15 to 45 is a decent lens, but I would probably, for a vlogger, I would probably go with an, uh, and a video guy, I'd probably go with the 11 to 22. But for vlogging, I mean, look at this. This is pretty much everything that a vlogger wants, right? Or even a video guy, even this on a tripod. This is fantastic. I can set up very quickly with a tripod anywhere and start shooting a video. And so, thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends. I'd love to do more uh, videos like this. Thank you so much Canon Canada for working with me and continuing to sending me camera equipment. Let me know down below as well what camera, what next Canon camera you want to see me review. What do you guys, you want me to review a DSLR? Maybe the 5D Mark IV or the 1D Mark whatever or a camcorder or what do you guys want to see? Comment down below and I will make it happen. Alright, so thanks for watching and happy shooting.